Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and once again we're going to commentate on a game of X-Wing that Vinny and I recently played. As you can see, I am playing as the Imperial Fleet. I've got the Star Starkiller, Base Pilot, Upsilon Class Shuttle, Emperor Palpatine, Kylo Ren Shuttle, and Pattern Analyzer. Countdown, TIE Striker with lightweight frame and adaptive ailerons. And Darth Vader, Advanced Targeting Computer, TIE X1, Predator, and Stealth Device. All of that came to 100. And Vinny played as the Rebels. He had the Attack Shuttle, Zeb, Dorsal Turret with the Phantom title. He's got the Ghost, uh, Hera Syndulla, VCX-100, Lando, Dorsal Turret, Reinforced Deflector, Shield Upgrade, Recon Specialist, and the Ghost title. And lastly, we've got Z-95, Aaron Kraken with Predator. Okay. So this is my first time trying out uh, Emperor Palpatine and uh, the new TIE Advanced title, which, you know, I was really excited to try them out. I wanted to see if Emperor Palpatine was really worth eight points, you know, I just, part of me is like, you know, eight points could be better spent somewhere else. I mean, you know, that that's the cost of two Predators and then another elite talent that could go to somebody else, you know what I mean? So it's like... You know, it, it, it could fill a number, uh, you know, it could take the place of two or three upgrade cards. So, you know, is Palpatine really worth it? And maybe we'll get into that in a future video. But for now, I'm using it. Placing my ships first. Um, the Upsilon goes first because it's a two. Then the TIE Striker's a five. And then I think Hera was a six, possibly. Six or seven. And then... You've got Aaron Kraken as an 8, and then Darth Vader as a 9. Now with my adaptive ailerons, you'll notice that my TIE Striker will be moving twice all the time. It's not that I'm boosting, it's that I have to use it. With Countdown, anyway. Uh, speaking of Countdown, basically the way he works is... Um, after all of the combat has... Or after the dice have been rolled and hits have been established and all that stuff... Uh, I can cancel all dice results as long as I'm not stressed and take one damage and one stress. So uh, it, literally he's a countdown to zero. So as long as he's not stressed. If he's stressed, that ability does not kick in. Darth Vader, as you probably know by now, can take two actions. Upsilon, really, it's a no-named shuttle with four attack dice with Emperor Palpatine. I do have a pattern analyzer so I can perform red man I can perform an action even while performing red maneuvers. Uh, the check for stress step is uh, basically after the perform action step. That's what that card does. Kylo Ren's title uh, shuttle allows me to assign a stress token to somebody. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I've got on there. Da -da -da. Okay, so the ghost yeah, Vinny's got a lot of different actions. Lando and Recon Specialist. I was explaining to him about the difference between taking an action and being assigned a token. And the way Recon Specialist works is that when you perform the focus action, you get an additional focus token. But it's not the same as being assigned a focus token. Taking a focus is just taking a focus. Being assigned a focus token through Lando Calrissian is not would not trigger recon specialist because of the way it's worded so that that was something new to Vinny he wasn't expecting so I don't know if he would have taken recon specialist having knowing that but he really likes Lando for some reason alright so his his plan seems to be fairly straightforward fly directly at me and blow me up uh, and I'm I'm up to the challenge so this is gonna be like one of those saloon type old west you know down and dirty brawls, attack dice flying everywhere, and only one person will remain standing at the end of it all. We'll see. He does have the attack shuttle docked on his ghost, so he can perform another attack uh, after the combat phase or at the end of the combat phase. 
I think with a secondary weapon or I, I don't remember what the, the specific wording is. But I know that he gets an extra attack at the end of the combat phase. All right. So uh, here I am just revealing a, a zero red. So I, with my pattern analyzer, I can stay where I am, take a focus, and then I get assigned a stress token. Adaptive ailerons kicks in for the tie striker, moving up. Trying to block him if I can, in case he wants to move in close. And I don't mind if the tie striker here takes a lot of punishment, because again, I can cancel all dice results and then take a hit uh, and a, a stress. The only downside to that is that when, once I take that stress, it no longer applies. So any second or third ship that attacks me, I won't be able to do that too. So basically, I want to try to keep only one ship uh, you know, attacking me per round if possible. But if he gets ganged up on, I can't. I can only use that ability once. All right. So he's using Lando's ability. I uh, roll two blanks. Lando is basically you roll two of a uh, two of a dice, and whatever comes up are the action or the tokens that you get. He rolled two blanks, so he doesn't get anything. That's just the risk that you take. All right. Here comes Darth Vader taking that target lock. Now, with the advanced targeting computer that I've got, um, as long as I don't spend it, I can add a crit to my roll, which is nice. All right, so spending my focus, that's two hits and a crit. The crit coming from advanced targeting computer. Uh, so one damage there. Loses a shield on the Z95. And here comes the uh, Aaron Kraken shooting with three attack dice. Uh, one hit, two focus, two evade. He could have rolled Predator there, but didn't. But even still, my my lightweight frame on my second or my third evade die was an evade. So um, even if he did roll predator and roll a hit, he still wouldn't have hit me. All right. So now the ghost is shooting, probably at the shuttle. Four attack dice, and it looks like four hits there. Do I palp it? Yeah, I decided to use Emperor Palpatine there to take uh, three hits instead of four. So I used it for defensive measures. And again, for those of you not, you don't know, Palpatine, use once per round, you can change any die to whatever you want. Once per round. All right, so now my shuttle shooting back. Focus. And that was, no, that was, uh, I'm sorry, that was the TIE Striker. I rolled enough damage there to knock him out. So that was pretty awesome. So his Aaron Kraken is already out. And here comes the shuttle now. Alright, so he takes, uh, I think, one damage? Must have only taken one damage. What's he rolling for? Oh yeah, the dorsal turret. Because he has the uh, the Phantom docked. All right, so one evade versus two hits. I just take a face down damage card. It's all it comes to. Okay. Not a bad first round. At least of combat. Okay, so then he's got some choices to make here. You know, is he going to turn away from the shuttle? Is he going to you know just keep flying toward it and hope for the best? I'm stressed. So I've got to use a green maneuver to clear it. So I do want to take actions. I've got my TIE Striker here who has to use adaptive ailerons. So more than likely I'm going to fly past the ghost here. My strategy was, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he was going to launch the Phantom at some point. So I wanted to get the TIE Striker toward the back to sort of engage that ship if I, if I had the ability to. All right, so I'm moving one forward with the shuttle. Took a focus. Wasn't sure if I'd be in range or not. All right, so adaptive ailerons, and then I did... What did I do? One straight. Okay, that way, if he did fly out his rear arc, uh, the Phantom, I might have been able to hit him or something. But I forgot that the Phantom flies out after the ghost executes a maneuver. 
So the ghost is now launching the phantom off to the right there. It's kind of, it's hard to see, but it's to the right of the ghost. And for his action, he's using Lando, rolled uh, an evade and a blank, so he gets an evade token. And now Darth Vader gets to go. And my action is a bearer roll. And a... I think it's a target lock. On the Phantom. Trying to take that down before anything happens. Because the ghost is going to take some work. Just because he's got all that hull and shields. Alright, so what is he doing? Okay, Darth Vader's shooting at the Phantom. Looks like range 2. Possibly. Alright, so I've got... Now, I could have used my Predator here. I wasn't thinking about it. I could have re-rolled that blank. He took, uh, it looks like, uh, I'm not sure how much damage he took there. Either one or two hits. Alright, so now the ghost is shooting his dorsal turret at, I think, my shuttle. And I decide not to use Palpatine here. I take three hits. And now my shuttle is shieldless. Alright, now his Zeb Phantom is going to be attacking probably the TIE Striker. Or is he going to use his Dorsal against... Yeah, which one is he going to attack? He could use the Dorsal against my shuttle. He could, Or he can use his forward firing arc against the Striker. Three attack dice. Palpatine, so no damage. All right, so here comes my shuttle. That's two hits, or yeah, I think that was two hits and his shuttle got knocked out. So unfortunately, his shuttle really didn't get a chance to do very much this round. But again, his ghost is pretty darn tanky, so trying to knock that. He's got reinforced deflectors on top of that. And what reinforced deflectors does is whenever you do three or more damage to a sh uh, you know to the ship, then um, you take the you take the damage as normal, but then you get a shield back. All right, so basically I'm doing a zero here, but with pattern uh, analyzer or whatever it is, enhancer or whatever, uh, I get a free action before I become stressed. So I took a target lock. All right, here comes the TIE Striker moving around the asteroid there. Taking an evade. Setting up for a future round. And the ghost moving too hard turn, bumping into Darth Vader. So no action. And now Darth Vader is going to too hard turn, so unfortunately can't shoot with Darth Vader this round. Now I thought about taking a target lock, but I remembered that he had a dorsal turret and I didn't want to take the chance. So I took a to I took an evade focus here. And I have stealth device on top of it, so I was trying to keep Darth Vader alive at all costs. Uh, so it looks like he gets to shoot out the rear firing arc or the front there. Whichever one he chooses to. Countdown is not stressed, so if he did attack Countdown and did damage, it would only count as one, because I could use my ability. I'd get stressed, but it looks like he's attacking the shuttle. Now, he didn't realize that he could attack with all of his attack dice out of his rear firing arc. So, I th yeah, I was, I, was exp I was looking at it, I was like, Vinny, you know, you can shoot out of this auxiliary firing arc with your full attack dice instead of using dorsal. So, he, I let him roll two more attack dice. So I had an evade, he had a hit and a focus. So there was no damage done there, but I let him roll two more. So right now there's no hits. And he rolls... A blank and a focus. Okay, so no, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But, um, so no damage was done to my Epsilon there. Now I'm rolling. Looks like four hits, possibly a crit, 
Three crits? Wow. All right, so two shields gone. Oh, he's down to two shields. Okay, got it. All right, and I used Kylo Ren's ability to, well, the, the title, to give him a stress token. I'm at range two. Okay, so the question is, is he going to psych me out and go left? Is he going to go right? You know, I wasn't sure. I mean, going left is going to be kind of difficult to do with that big base like that. Had it been a smaller ship, it could have been, it could have been done. Alright, so my shuttle ends up bumping into Darth Vader. Still got my target lock from the previous round, though. TIE Striker... Adaptive ailerons uh, going straight, and then a one hard turn, which is a white maneuver, so I'm not stressed. Taking a focus. All right, now his ghost is doing a two slight turn, one slight turn. Oops. Yeah, that was bad. Again, Lando trying to trying to play the odds here and got two blanks. All right, Darth Vader does a two hard turn. First action, bear roll to get into arc, and then second action, target lock. That was a risky move on my part. I really didn't want to do that, but I figured I'd want to burn him down as quickly as possible, and I was hoping my stealth device would save me if he attacked. So Darth Vader shoots first, range one, three hits, well, it looks like two crits, and then I added a crit from Advanced Targeting Computer. So, that's... Alright, so what did I... Okay, I think it was a stress, possibly. Thrust Control Fire, yeah, one stress token, and then Loose Stabilizer. After you execute a white maneuver, flip the... or take a stress token. Alright, so that was pretty bad, and he gets a, a shield back for that, I think. Or should. I don't know if he remembers or not. It looks like the ghost is shooting Darth Vader. Hit and two hits, two evade, so no damage. I got lucky with Darth Vader. It could have been a lot worse. I guess I could have palped it too if I wanted to. Alright, so three attack dice onto the ghost from the striker. Spending a focus, three hits. Two damage cards. He gets a shield back. He remembered that he was supposed to get a shield from last time, so that's why I only gave him two damage cards. All right. Target lock. Palpatine. So that's four hits. Three hits and a crit. Damage sensor ray. You cannot perform actions except those listed on damage cards. So he's got to roll for that before he can take any actions like Lando or Focus or whatever the case may be. It could have been a lot worse. The reinforced deflectors is definitely helping, I think. Okay. So what's he going to do again? I didn't know what he was going to do here. He could have gone left and, and totally psyched me out. So with my shuttle, I decided to stay where I was, use my pattern, again, analyzer, enhance, whatever it is, to get my target lock and then take a stress. And here comes the TIE striker. Taking a risk here, doing a K turn, giving myself a stress. So my ability does not kick in. So I am vulnerable. But I just I wanted to get all guns on him as much as possible. Luckily, he is out of arc, but does have that dorsal, so at most he can use two attack dice. Darth Vader, what's he doing? Oh, he's rolling to... Okay, he rolled to uh, flip that card face down, and he was successful. And here comes Darth Vader. Focus evade. 
Darth Vader shooting first with three attack dice at range one, plus the crit if I don't re-roll. Spending focus, adding a crit via targeting computer, and it's four. One was a direct hit on top of that. Okay, so the crit... Okay, so yeah, he's out. But that was a really good game. Uh, Vinny did an excellent job with the Ghost, I think. It's just unfortunate. It, he didn't get a chance to use his ships. Like, he was being taken out one by one too quickly for him to really make use of them. So, um, I don't... I, I think it was a cool matchup, you know, Ghost versus Upsilon. But at the same time, uh, had it not been a... a, a a fight to the death from the get-go. It could have been very interesting to see how all those ships flew around and where they would have ended up. So uh, if you guys want to see more X-Wing videos, let us know if you guys haven't already subscribed to my channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.